got the stock flipped over and uh, we're going to be doing the opposite side which happens to be the top. Uh, we're going to start out with a fly cutter. This is 2,000 RPM, 10 inches per minute. It's a Tormach Superfly. Now we're going with a three flute Aluma Power end mill. We're going to do some adaptive clearing.
All right. That's really good. All right, so next we've got a quarter inch chamfer. And we're just going to uh, chamfer the edges. Alright, that looks really good. Now one last touch. Let me get set up for that. Well, you can see you can get pretty good results engraving with just a cheap center drill. As long as you don't go too deep, that's about six thousandths deep and about 4,500 RPMs. So that finishes up our lift plate for our power draw bar. I like to keep an empty tool holder in here. You don't want to leave the draw bar empty with the pressure on it from the bell bill, so you want to leave an empty tool holder in there. Well, that wraps up this video on the power draw bar lift plate. Uh, really satisfied with the way uh, the finish is turning out. Uh, there's still a little room for improvement, but most of that's just on the feeds and speeds and my end of the, the deal. Uh, really satisfied overall with the way the power draw bar is working. Uh, this is a very similar design to a buddy of mine, Chris's, that he's been using on the G0, G704. And uh, it's been working reliably for him for a few years. So I think uh, it's going to work out just fine. Uh, the only difference being is we're using a slip fit top hat, whereas on the 704 it's threaded. 
I don't think that's going to present too much of a problem unless we have maybe some collet sticking and with routine maintenance on the collet I don't really see that that's going to be an issue but time will tell we'll just have to see we're using six Belleville washers they are 2750 pounds working load and a flat load of around 4,000 um, I'm running them at around 100 and between 150 and 170 PSI I think I'm getting about 33 3400 pounds of force uh, to hold the tool in there which seems to be uh, adequate for the machining that I've done so far so we'll just have to see if we have any kind of tool pulled out uh, I'm using an 80 millimeter bore three-stage air cylinder uh, this is a double acting so I need a supply air to press the piston down and a return to lift the piston up right here you could use a spring return uh, I kind of prefer the double acting uh, but that's just me personally I'm not going to be in a situation where I'm going to be running my machine without air anyway so for me it didn't really matter however some people prefer the spring return uh, they're a little more expensive uh, air cylinder with the spring return uh, which will allow you to locate your solenoid valve down below because you only really need one tube coming up to your air cylinder you won't you don't need this one um, but one or the other it, it really doesn't it's not that big of a deal I don't think it's that big of a deal to have mounted on the side there um, there is a little button on the side where you can uh, manually actuate the air solenoid and uh, of course having it right next to the head is real convenient uh, I've got mine connected to a foot switch down here on the floor and I'm using a 24 volt solenoid and I'm picking the 24 volts up from my tri-power power supply so I just ran uh, power from my control box to my foot pedal and then split the hot side uh, and ran it up to uh, through the switch and up to the solenoid so real simple install there uh, I did have to pick up a different compressor my silent air compressor will not put out more than 120 psi so I picked up this com compressor uh, with a tip from Chris uh, and it's rated at 175 psi it's a husky that I got from Home Depot uh, ordered it online and it was free shipping to the house so I couldn't beat that it was, I think it was around 230 for the compressor uh, it's got a 20 gallon tank so that should be uh, plenty enough air for this particular uh, situation I can even use it for blowing so that's good keep the chips out of the way I need to address the flood coolant it's a little weak uh, as you can see in the video trying to get these chips out of the way is just uh, starting to become a problem with the belt drive so we'll have to address that also added a filter oiler to keep the air clean put a little bit of oil into the air cylinder occasionally uh, just mounted that onto the side of my See if I can get a shot in here. But I mounted that to the side here, and I just have my air supply running in on the left, and then out I have the blue hose going up to my uh, cable chain, and then up to the air solenoid. Uh, this is just a fairly inexpensive AirTac air solenoid. Mine happens to be 24 volts. So I guess that pretty much wraps up this video. Um, for those of you interested in a belt drive and or power drawbar for the 727, uh, shoot me an email. We'll see what kind of uh, interest there is in those. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to comment. Uh, as always, thanks for watching the videos. How about a thumbs up if you like the video? Please subscribe and most importantly, do so.